Hi, I'm Matt Crowley. Welcome to our episode on the Silicon Handshake Non-Disclosure Agreements. So in your travels, you may hear a number of terms. You may have had someone talk about a confidentiality agreement, a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA. Those are actually all the same things. NDA is just short for non-disclosure agreement. And the substance of it is trying to protect trade secrets, proprietary information from someone that might misuse it. So what is confidential information? So first, things that I put on my website, that I've talked about in press interviews, that I give out to my customers in brochures at a trade show, if I tell the public something, that's obviously not confidential. So you don't want public information to be protected by a legal agreement. Instead, the goal is if I have pricing that's my rack rate at my hotel, that's what's on my website, but my front desk people are allowed to offer 20% off and we don't advertise that, my private rates, that's confidential information. And I would really appreciate it if the people at the front desk in my hotel don't wander around telling everybody and putting on their Twitter uh, feeds and their Facebook what it is that we're charging to people that are really good customers. So I would ask my employees to sign an NDA agreeing that they won't take non-public information about my business and just give it away or even worse, misuse it for their own personal benefit. So confidential information in the tech world could be my source code. I really don't want my competitors to see how we built our software programs. It could be a list of our customers and who the decision makers are, what their budgets are. That would all be horribly confidential. A list of my employees might not be confidential, especially if I have little thumbnails of their smiling faces on my website, but what I pay them, what their benefits are, what their social security numbers are, all of that type of information would be confidential. So I would want to make sure that's protected in the case that I needed to share that with another party. When is information not confidential? Like I said, if it's something I make public, you really can't protect that. Uh, if I've told somebody else and they're under a non-disclosure agreement, that's still protected and I would want people to respect that as a trade secret. So when would I be using an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement? So there are times when you use it and times when you don't. For employees, every employee, every independent contractor at your company should really sign one. And we're going to do another episode specifically on that topic. When it comes with, to customers, if we're going to share the specs of our software and we're going to do a specific case for them with very specific pricing for them, I would really like that customer not to share my pricing for them with other people. And I would, because they might want to take it and see if they can shop for a better deal with one of my competitors. If I'm going to sell my company, I want to make sure that the potential buyer doesn't look at all my employee information and then try to hire them away from me or call all of my customers when they see what pricing I'm giving them. So those are people that I would want to sign a non-disclosure agreement. A potential buyer or acquirer, uh, an employee, a potential customer, Maybe vendors where I'm trying to get someone to set up a new banking relationship for me. The credit check information they do on me, I really don't want them putting that up on their website. That could damage my business. So we want to protect those things. When is it reasonable for a party to say, hey, I agree to keep information confidential, but I'm forced to disclose this? When would that happen? If the FBI comes calling, or the Immigration Service comes calling, or some other federal agency, or a court issues a subpoena for the information that they are requesting, then in that case, the third party might be allowed to take my information and disclose it to the government. But usually you put in language that says, if you get that kind of request and you're permitted to tell me, 
I'd really like you to tell me first so I can have my lawyer go to court to try and either prevent that or to narrow the amount of information that I give them. So how long should an NDA last? Well, if someone's going to try to buy my company, they should at least keep my information confidential while we're talking. And if the deal busts, it doesn't work out, I need them to keep it confidential for a period of time. Could be a year, could be five years. It really depends on the industry. So for example, a lot of my clients work in software, in apps, on websites. And when they do that, the information that a potential buyer might look at might be the code. That code, usually in my world, in two years, <clears throat> the software has gone stale. And the problem that my client's trying to solve might no longer even exist anymore. So normally you wouldn't ask for a five-year confidentiality agreement in that kind of situation. In a more stable industry like automotive or steel, maybe five years worth of trade secret protection is good. So it's going to be a little bit of a negotiation, but usually it's a couple of years. So <clears throat> what other kinds of things are sitting inside a confidentiality agreement? Well, there might also be a provision called a non-solicitation provision. So what's that? What that is, is again, if someone's trying to buy my company and I have 40 employees, they might find that really three of them are the geniuses that are doing the coding of my software and the rest of the people they don't need. What I would hate to have happen is for them to cancel buying my company. And then a week later, they call Susie and Bob and Jeff and offer them jobs. So rather than paying me 10 million for my company, they hire each of them for 200,000 and they get all of the information and all of the coding, but I'm left holding the bag. That I would not want to have happen. So in some circumstances, you'll add a non-solicitation provision. There may also be a provision in there related to retain knowledge. So what is that? So if you and I are actually working at Google and we're going to acquire a little company, they might be working on uh, autonomous vehicles. There are tons of companies now working on autonomous vehicles. What we wouldn't want that tiny company with two people to do is to be able to say, well, we told you about autonomous vehicles and our techniques, and now you aren't allowed to be in that industry because you violate our confidentiality agreement. Well, baloney. If I take schematics that I see or code that I saw during the diligence, and I actually use those, then I deserve the beating I'm going to get. If instead, I have a team of three people looking at those schematics, they destroy their notes, we don't use the schematics, and we have another team of 20 people doing other things, and they happen to come up with the same concept, completely different uh, in terms of how they structure it, they didn't use that confidential information to do it, we ought to be allowed to do that. So you would usually have language covering that. And then beyond that, uh, if you are designing the agreement as a mutual non-disclosure agreement, rather than saying you're going to protect Crowley.com information, what we'll say is the recipient, the party that actually gets the information, will hold that confidential. And information they get from the disclosing party could be you, could be me, that's the information that we want protected. Now, there are some parties that simply will not sign a non-disclosure agreement. So, for example, if you go to a venture capital firm, they're never going to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Well, why is that? Because if I have a venture capital fund and I'm working on Bitcoin technology, I'm going to see a thousand Bitcoin companies. And I can't be prohibited from investing in a Bitcoin company that does X because you also happen to do X. So why my perspective would be if it's so incredibly confidential that you can't tell me, don't tell me. That's an easy way to keep a secret. But if you want my money, you have to understand I, I can't be restrained from investing in companies like yours. Now, if instead I'm an angel investor and I've run three companies before, I'm an operator, not an investor, but I might invest in you, 
you probably want an MBA from me because unlike the VC, I have the experience that if I understand exactly how you built what you built, I might be able to build it and compete against you and do a better job. So not every investor will sign one, but some will, some won't. You have to understand where the boundaries are. Now, when would you use a one-way MBA and when would you use a mutual MBA? So the mutual MBA, I suggested to you earlier that you use a mutual MBA whenever both parties are exchanging information. Sometimes you'll use a mutual MBA all the time. Now, why would you do that? Because even if I'm the only one sharing information with you, if I send you a one-way non-disclosure agreement, you're going to be worried that I've made it really onerous because I don't have to balance the agreement in your favor. I'm just worried about me. If I hand you a mutual non-disclosure agreement, even though you might not really be given information back, you'll feel at least emotionally comfortable that I'm probably not gonna screw you into the ground with really tough terms because in the event you share something back with me, I don't want incredibly nasty, strict, unfair terms applied to me. So I'm gonna to try to be fair to you. So it suggests that the contract might be more balanced. So as you think about using NDAs, you might wanna consider using mutual NDAs. So with that, you now know what a non-disclosure agreement is, what confidential information is, how to protect it. You know to look for non-solicitation clauses and think about if they're appropriate. And you also understand the difference between one-way and mutual NDAs. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. My name's Matt Crowley. My contact information is at the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.